Welcome back, everybody, to the PicksWise NFL Show. I'm your host, Rachel Von Oranya, and welcome to week 17 of the 2020 NFL season. It's the last week of the regular season, and man, time has flown by. This time of year always makes me really sad, as I'm excited to get into the playoffs, but I'm also sad to see the regular season go. As always, I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Jeff Reinbold. And before I say hello to him, let me just remind you guys, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for viewing on YouTube. Please give us your thoughts on the show, our picks, whatever you want to tell us, maybe your picks, tell us how to make some money. Let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, be sure to hit it. All right, Jeff, Jeff Reinbold. How are you doing today, my man? Great, OJ. How is things in Houston? H-Town, H-Town, you know, we're doing all right. We're doing all right down here. It's, it's a unseasonably warm. You know, it's always warm here, but I mean, it's like humid and hot outside and it is very hard for me to get into the Christmas and winter spirit. Thus, I still have my tree up in my apartment <laughs> until January 1st. Is that is that crazy? I know some people have rules on when you have to take down the tree. Mine's January 1st. Hey, make your own rules, girl. That's all you do. Make your own rules. That's kind of how I like to live life. Uh, so, Jeff, before we talk about week 17, let's reflect. Let's reflect back on week 16, okay? Um, a week I really don't want to talk about as far as my picks go. But uh, we can uh, talk about yours for sure because you are killing it, Jeff. You went 3-2 and two against the spread. Uh, both your underdog and your lock covered. Your underdog was the 49ers. You had them covering the Buccaneers, obviously, they handled the Lions. Um, your record is now very profitable. You are 40 and 35 against the spread this year. And your underdogs, Jeff, your underdogs are 11 and 5. And your lock is 7 and 8. Not bad. So um, this week, you can get back to 500 with your locks. But oh my gosh, your underdogs are 11 and 5. How do you do it? It's just, you know, I, again, you've been in this game as long as I have. You learn a thing or two. And, you know, I tell you what. This has been so much fun, and what's really cool now, OJ, is we get to start the new year. These are all New Year's games, so let's let's make sure 2021 is even more profitable than 2020 was. I love it, and the show is going to continue into the playoffs and into the postseason, so we are going to help you guys make some money. Now, before we get into what we learned last week in the NFL Week uh, 16, my Producer Ben wants to torment me, and uh, of course, I gave I gave Jeff's uh, record and his picks. Um, I need to also talk about my picks. Um, I started off the season really hot, but it has been a downfall since about week seven. Uh, last week, I went zero and four against the spread. I went three and two with the point total. Apparently, that's all I can do in this half of the season is get the point totals. Um, apparently, the Patriots are worse than I thought. Um, but my lock, which is also like a plead to Arthur Blank and, and Matt Ryan and the Falcons, they covered. That's all I wanted him to do was cover. I said, just show me that you belong on the same field as the Chiefs. And sure as hell they did. You know, they were plus 11 um, and they should have won the game had Young Way Koo made a kick at the end of the game. Probably would have tied it up and who knows where it would have went from there. But I digress. My record is 36 and 39. And uh, yeah, needless to say, I have blown my lead just like my Falcons do. Um, I need a strong week to finish the season, okay? Now, Jeff, let's talk a little bit about week 16, okay? And mm -hmm. Ben's Green Bay Packers. Um, they made me look pretty stupid with my pick last week. I had the Titans covering, and sure enough, they did not. The Packers, they handled the Titans in the snow. It was a beautiful game to watch um, just from that perspective. Not a single penalty or punt in the whole game. Okay, that's an NFL record. Aaron Rodgers is now minus 300 favorite for MVP. Um, the Packers team is going to secure the number one seed with a win over Chicago. Jeff, how impressed are you with Ben's Packers this year? Well, I think, you know, when you look at them, and, and you know, this is why people need to watch this show. We've been saying for almost a month now, that Aaron Rodgers was going to win the MVP. And if you could have locked in, if you'd have taken $100 and locked it in back when we first brought it out, you'd be making some good money come MVP day. You know, he's, a, he's such an incredible talent, and he's been so consistent. You know, that's to take nothing away from Patrick Mahomes or, or you know, Russell Wilson or any of the other guys that are, you know, that have been, quote, the hot guys over the course of the season. But you recognize in this business after a while that consistency and the ability to do it week in and week out, that's what separates players. And Aaron Rodgers' history is that. He's, he's lost Devontae Adams. He's lost Jones. He's lost players. 
you know, he's, he's played with second team players and still he plays at the highest of all levels. And I, I think it's tremendous. This may be his best career year. Yeah, it sure is. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure the stats would back you up on that one, Jeff. Look, at age 37, okay, this dude, we know he's going to be in the Hall of Fame, so I'm going to call him future Hall of Famer. He leads the NFL with 44 touchdown passes to just five interceptions, Jeff, and a 119.4 pass ratings. Like, that is insane to only have five interceptions to 44 touchdown passes. And he's done that. I know that the running game has started to come into full effect late in the season, but I mean, starting off the season, it wasn't there and the defense wasn't there. And then you go and you miss Devontae Adams for a brief stretch of time to injury. Like it's, it's ridiculous. And you're right. He is playing at a level that is probably the best that we've ever seen him. And he's doing it throughout all of that. And, and, and then in a COVID the Rona season, at that, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's just, it's insane. And I am now a believer. I wasn't a believer earlier in the season, but I'm definitely a believer. I'm, a, I'm on the Packers train right now. So I definitely think that they can win it all. So um, I'm also trying to win it all, Jeff. So let's go ahead and get into week 17 of the NFL season. You ready to make some money? Let's do it. All right, Jeff, let's talk about the crazy situation in the NFC least, as we like to call it on the show. Um, we're going to focus on the Cowboys versus the Giants game. And as of Wednesday, that's today when we film the show, uh, Cowboys are favored by three points and the point total is set at 45 points. Now, let's remind ourselves of how this works in the NFC East. OK, it's a little complicated to get into the postseason. Washington wins the division with a win over Philly, and it's just as simple as that. That's all they got to do, beat Philly. Um, if Washington doesn't beat Philly, then the winner of this game will win the NFC East. So these games are really big for these guys. Now, remember when the Giants looked really good a couple weeks ago against Seattle? It just feels like a lifetime ago, right? Because they've lost three straight since then, and they've only put up 26 points within those three games, within that time period. Um, the, they beat the Eagles 37 to 17. Most recently in the last three games, the giants have only scored 26 points. As I said, the Cowboys on the other hand, they've scored 108 points within the past three weeks. So big difference there, Jeff, clearly the momentum feels like it's with the Dallas Cowboys right now, but who the heck knows whenever it comes to this division and these teams, right? How do you see this game going? Who you got? Well, you know, football is a game of runs. It's a game of streaks. And right now, the streaks for the Cowboys are all positive. They're scoring points. A defense that was a month ago, two months ago, absolutely awful, has somehow found some teeth. And Jalen Smith is healthy. Le Leighton Van Der Esch is healthy. They're getting some stuff out of their front. Uh, they moved Gallimore, the rookie from Oklahoma, in. He's playing well. And, but most surprisingly, their secondary played pretty well against the Eagles last week. Not against the Eagles, but still, you can only play the teams that are on your schedule. The Giants, on the end, other hand, OJ, are trending exactly in the opposite direction. They're offensively so challenged. You know, um, you mentioned that Daniel Jones, he's not healthy. He can't be healthy. He's not right. anywhere near the dynamic cool young quarterback we saw in the early, first half of the season. They, they're beat up. Their front's beat up. Uh, their defense has really taken a step back in the last two weeks. So, you know, again, I, I promised myself I would never bet the Cowboys again. But if, you know, again, a three-point spread in a game like this that's so absolutely important to their future and an opportunity to get in the playoffs, they've got a number of veteran players on their team. Andy Dalton has been in the playoffs before. He's throwing the ball to a great core of receivers. I truly believe that the Cowboys will cover and win this game. Yeah, Jeff, um, I think I'm right there with you. You know, three weeks ago, I wouldn't have said that, but Andy Dalton is playing very well. They look to have one of the best young wide receiver cores, I think, in the NFL. Um, they're, they're starting to look like the team that I kind of thought they were going to be earlier in the season. And what do you know? It's happening with Andy Dalton. And look, if you think that the Dallas Cowboys are going to come into this game and just do enough, just do enough, right? Like play game manager with Andy Dalton and just do enough, right? Run the ball a lot, just enough to win this game. I think you're wrong because conspiracy theory here. I really think that if Andy Dalton shows out throughout 
this week and then whatever playoff game that they're probably going to get into, we start to question now. I mean, you tell me if I'm crazy, Jeff, could Andy Dalton be the future of this team? So you bet your ass Andy Dalton, I think, is going to come out there and ball out. Now, I'll I, let it be said, the Giants, their defense plays really hard for Coach Judge, but I don't think that the Giants have enough. And like we said earlier, uh, with Daniel Jones, since, since the hamstring injury, it's like his legs have been taken out from underneath him. And when he doesn't have his legs, they don't win games. So yeah, I got I got the I got the Cowboys minus three and uh, the point total. Here's the thing on the point total. I know the Giants aren't scoring a lot of points, but the Cowboys are. And I think I read that in like six out of the last seven games that the Cowboys have played in, the over has hit. So I with 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 the over hitting a lot in Cowboys games and with Andy Dalton coming out and balling the way I think he's going to come out and ball. I'm taking the over in this game. All right, what do you think about that? I think, well, you know, there's a lot of what you said I really 100% agree in, and I will never, ever challenge you when it comes to picking points because I have never been around anybody that can pick the points better than you. But, you know, again, I think when you talk about Dalton, it's going to be really interesting to see, and this is what fans have to understand. He's been in big games before. He's been to the playoffs. He knows knows the importance of the whole thing. Um, That's invaluable. The other thing is for him personally – whether it's Dallas or somewhere else, he's playing for his future. And there are teams that are going to be looking for quarterbacks in this offseason. The better he plays, the more his, the more his brand you know, is enhanced. The more you know, people will want to come say, hey, what do we got to do to get Andy Dalton? The other guy that is a key to this is Zeke. And for the first time in a long time, last week we saw – a little bit of that old Zeke. When he busted off that long run, I thought, you know, that's the energy, that's the juice that we haven't seen exactly. That's the guy that needs to be fed. That other guy, they can just put on a diet. But that that (laughs) Zeke, he needs to be fed. Yeah, he does. He's a big guy. And you know what? Whenever you get feed me tattooed on your stomach... And then you show your stomach all game with the jerseys rolled up. You better, you better come out, show up, and show up. And little, little tidbit here. I forgot to say this. Producer Ben, we were talking about this before we got into this segment. Three or four weeks ago, the Dallas Cowboys had like a 1.3, 1.6% chance of making the playoffs. And I just Googled it right now, right before we did this, and now it is at 27%. So that is pretty crazy to think. I really thought that they were dead in the water, and they're not. They've been revived. So what do you know? Let us know in the comments below what you think. You got the Cowboys or you got the Giants? What's your point total? Let us know. All right, Jeff, let's talk about my Falcons. Fail cons, as I call them. Um, they're going to Tampa Bay to take on Tom Brady again. Uh, not, not usually a good thing for us whenever that happens. Um, as of today, Wednesday, Tampa is six-point favorites, and the point total is set at 50 and a half points. Now, the Falcons... They did what they do, right? They they play a really, really good team. And in the first half of the game, they look pretty good and they keep it close. And they look like they belong on the same field as other professional teams do. They played well against the Chiefs. Uh, they ended up losing the game 17-14 to 14 because Young Way Koo just forgot how to kick, I guess. I think he was like 21, 22 yards out and he missed it. It's it's ridiculous because this guy is like one of the best kickers in the league. He's going to the Pro Bowl this year. But I digress. I digress. It's just the Falcons, right? Uh, the spread was 11 points, and they easily covered it, but they couldn't pull off the upset. Uh, now, the Buccaneers, on the other hand, that that is a team that probably knows how to win. Uh, they ran all over the Lions. The score was 47-7. to seven. They even let Blaine Gabbert come in and rested Tom Brady. And what do you know? He came in and threw two touchdowns in that game. Like, it's... Ridiculous. It's a hugely dominant display against a Lions team without Matthew Stafford. Uh, now, Jeff, the last time the Falcons played Tom Brady, we had flashes of Super Bowl 51, right? They looked really good in the first half, and then they choked it all the way in the second half. I think it was 17 to nothing in the first half of that game. They ended up losing 31 to 27. Now, do you think that the Falcons can cover six points here in Tampa, or are the Bucks? going to dominate how do you see it going well i don't know if the bucks are going to dominate because i really to be honest with you oj i've been impressed with how atlanta has handled the second half of the season you know raheem morris has done a good job of keeping that team together 
I don't think uh, he's going to be the head coach there, although that could be the case. But defensively, they've gotten better. Uh, you know, the thing with Atlanta, when, you, when you're close a lot of times and you just can't finish, it's usually because you're not quite good enough. And they had some opportunities against Kansas City. They had two interceptions that they, you know, had their hands on and didn't make plays on. Yeah. When you play great teams, you got to make those plays. Now, I don't think Tampa is in the same class as Kansas City, but they showed last week and they're starting to show more and more each week that they can be an elite team offensively. And Tom Brady was unconscious in the first half. If they had, if they had left him in, they could have scored 80 points. I really, truly believe that. He had almost, I don't know, they had almost 500 yards of offense at halftime. Now, the Lions were without their coaches because of COVID. They, you know, Matthew Stafford, like you said, got hurt. I think their secondary just kind of mailed it in during the game. But I, I think Atlanta will come and compete harder. I just think yeah. Tampa has way much more to play for. Uh, additionally, they're still finding themselves offensively. So every rep they get is a precious rep. So I, I'm going to take the Bucs. Um, and it, you know, I think that they can cover the six. Yeah, the, the Bucs are definitely going to win this game, obviously. But I say obviously. I shouldn't say anything's obviously or set in stone, especially in 2020, right? But um, I do believe that the Falcons are going to cover in this game. And I say that for one reason and one – well, two reasons, actually. The most obvious is that you have a lot of players on this team – that are putting stuff on film for a future team. I think this whole entire team is going to get blown up in the offseason. I really do. Um, outside of Matt Stafford, obviously, and Julio, I do think the entire team blows up. So these guys know it, and I think they're going to start putting, you know, they have, they're, very, they're very motivated, right, to go out there and perform really well. But also, the players on this team that played in Super Bowl 51 – and then also played in the game, was it two weeks ago, whenever they played the Buccaneers and blew a 17-0 to lead at halftime to Tom Brady again. And then Tom Brady comes out and he posts that, that video where he's like, it's all about the comeback whenever you play against Atlanta. Hi, I'm Tom Brady. Like, I just think that they're pissed. I know Matt Ryan is pissed. And I just, I think they're going to cover. I think it's going to be a close game. I wouldn't be surprised if it's one of those games that go into overtime because it is just personal at this point. So with that being said, I do believe that the Falcons cover in this game. Now, what do you think about the point total? It's pretty high. It's 50 and a half points. What do you think? Well, both of these teams are teams that can score points. Now, I, right. think, um, I, I think Tampa's defense is pretty salty. I think Tampa's defense stacks up with Kansas City's, and we didn't see a great bunch of touchdowns being scored by Atlanta last week. So, you know, I, I, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take the under in it, OJ, but uh, I, I still believe that, uh, you know, Tampa will cover the six. Yeah. Um, I, I like, I like the over in this game, um, particularly if Julio Jones comes and plays. And I know that Raheem Morris said that if he's able to play, he's going to play. Like, they're not going to – they're not resting anybody. Um, obviously, Raheem Morris wants to coach, right? He probably wants the head coaching job or maybe somewhere else. So, he ain't going to rest nobody. Um, if Julio plays, there's that added umph to this game, right? Because he was also in that Super Bowl. So, I, I like the over regardless in this game. And that's mainly why. And I'm, I'm trying really hard to be as – objective as possible whenever it comes to this but man when Tom Brady plays against my Falcons man it just <laughs> turn the dagger man it just um but I'm let's make didn't some money say, with the over guys <laughs> didn't you say that uh, something about never betting against uh Tom Brady I said Tom Brady coming off of a loss oh, okay okay I just want to I just want to clarify that because I know this yeah. is a first this is personal for you you think it's personal for Julio? It's personal for OJ. It is. It is. And that guy, Matt Ryan, too, who the local media in Atlanta has been slandering him. These stupid fans everywhere talking about trading him. First of all, you're not going to trade him. You can't trade him. He's like 4,500,000 5, mil against the dead cap if, if you cut him. And he's an older guy. I think he's 36 years old. And while I believe he's still got it, I don't know if other franchises are willing to trade a bunch of stuff for a dude that's getting paid that much money at that age. So I don't 
don't think he's going anywhere, but fans are stupid. That's what that's where we get the term, right? Fans, fanatics, we're not really logical. But in this game, Jeff is going to uh, break my heart, and he's taking Tampa Bay to easily cover the six points. I'm taking the Falcons to cover. By no means do I expect them to win, but I do expect them to play better than six points on the road. And uh, Jeff is taking the under. Was that correct? Over. Okay, we're both going with the over in this game, 15 and a half points. Let us know in the comments below what you think, who you got. All right, Jeff, let's get into some NFC North, a little black and blue division talk here with the Green Bay Packers heading into Soldier Field to take on Da Bears. Um, it's a game with huge implications and ramifications on both sides. The Packers can seal the number one seed in the NFC with the win here. And it would mean that they have a buy for the first week of the playoffs, obviously, and home field advantage, albeit without fans. So really don't know if there is much of a home field advantage, but I digress. Um, it's a huge advantage nonetheless to get the buy, right? The Bears, they've actually somehow weaseled their way into playoff contention. Who would have thunk it, right? Um, if they win, they are in. So if they beat the Packers, they are into the playoffs. If they lose, they need the Chicago Cardinals. Oh, I mean the Arizona Cardinals, to lose to the Rams. Jeff, this is a much improved... You know, the script says this is a much improved Bears team under Trubinsky. Mind you, they have since they've had this comeback, they haven't played a defense, okay? But call me a hater. They are improved with Trubinsky, and he looks to have his confidence back. Um, they're going to be fired up for this game, right? And we all know they have a really good defense. Is it enough to stop Green Bay and pull off one of the upsets of the century, at least to me. They're five-point favorites, so it's not that big. Well, but I think still. There's, a couple, there's a couple reasons why the Bears are better, and they've scored over 30 points you know, a number of times this last month well, since Trubisky's come back. The biggest thing is they got David Montgomery back at running. Yes. And that's a huge yes. advantage to them because everything that Matt Nagy wants to do begins with their ability to run the football. Uh, you know... They've got Allen Robinson outside, who's a grown man. He, he is a legitimate, legitimate threat. They've gotten some red zone production from Jimmy Graham, which they hadn't gotten early in the year. And Trubisky, you know, for all the controversy that swirls around the kid, if you look at his record this year as a starter, he's over 500. It, he was not responsible. It was Foles when they really went through that real tough stretch where they couldn't score any points. So the Bears offense is is better there's no question about that this game is in chicago this is one of the oldest and most heated rivalries in the in the national football league it's loser go home if loser goes home if you're in chicago you lose that game you are out of the playoff structure so there's so much for chicago to play for but all of that gets discounted by the fact that it's number 12 at quarterback on the other side and you know, we saw the emergence of a young running back in, in Green Bay last week. Uh, you know, I, obviously Aaron Jones is an incredible talent. Um, Robert Tanyan's become a poor man's Kelsey in that <laughs> offense. And, you know, you've got Devontae Adams who just, you know, he makes plays that other players can't make. And so when you look at all of that, you look at the entirety of that, and let's give the defense a little love too because everybody said – Last week was going to be the week that uh, they're exposed because King Henry was going to come in there and just pound the ball at them. And they held up. And that's all they could do is yeah. hold up. And, and so, you know, the secondary made a few plays. I think the Packers are going to win this game. And I think the Packers are going to cover. Now, I will also say this. All of these bets this week are the hardest bets that we'll make all year long because there's so much – at stake here and there's so rest is so important to certain players but i think in this game because of the rivalry because the packers are playing for the bye uh and you know not just the bye the week of the bye helps you but i don't care if there's nobody in the stands in green bay no team in the national football league knows how to play in cold weather outdoors better than the green bay packers think Absolutely. about it they're probably going to get the Saints, and they want the Saints to come to the cold weather. They want Drew Brees to have to throw the ball in the wind and the snow. And so to me, I think the Packers are going to be ultra motivated for this one, and I think they'll come in, win the game, and cover the points.
Yeah, I'm really interested to see how the Packers, what they choose to do defensively here. Because while I don't think Mitchell Trubisky is some world beater or anything, but, well, okay, I look at last week's game versus the Titans, right? And I was one of those stupid people who thought that the Titans were actually the perfect recipe to beat the Packers. Um, I digress, they did not. Now, Derrick Henry, for any other running back, you know, 94, 98 yards, whatever he got in that game, uh, would be would be a good night, right? But for him, that's that's a little a little lackluster, I guess, so to speak. Um, they to held him under three three digits is is a big deal, and I don't know how much of that was Green Bay's defense signal, you know, signing in on him and being like, okay, we're going to shut you down and force Tannehill to throw it, or was that just because they you really can't run the ball the way that you want to whenever you get down that fast you know, playing from behind. So I don't know, but I'm interested to see, like, do the Packers, do they shut down David Montgomery and say, okay, Trubisky, go ahead, show us why you, why you're number two overall a couple of years ago and, sh- you know, show us that. I'm curious to see how that's going to go, but I do have the Packers winning this game for sure. Um, I'm a little leery about the spread just because of what always said, the implications here, the division, the history, and just the fact that the Bears are playing better than we've seen it. This is this is going to be a true test. We're going to see who the Bears really are in this game. I'm going to take the Packers to cover the five points. Now, the point total here, Jeff, is really high, in my opinion, for a game like this. Um, I'm looking forward to get 52 points. What do you think about that? I'm going to go with the under in that. I think I agree with you. I think uh, although there's no sp- no snow forecast in Chicago and only nine mile an hour winds, I just think the nature of the game is that this is going to be less than 50 points scored in a game. Yeah, I. Ugh, this is really tough for me. i It's so hard for me to go with the under, but I think I'm also going to go with the under in this game for everything we just said. Hey, you so. better never, you better never let me talk you into changing what your thoughts are on points because you are the princess of points, I'm telling you. I am the point princess. I love it. But um, I'm, I'm looking at the Packers' schedule right now, and I'm looking at the games where they played really good defenses, okay? There haven't been that many. They put up 37 against the Saints, um, but they only put up 10 against the Buccaneers. They, the 49ers, they put up 34 against, let me see here. The Colts, they put up 31. Yeah, they can, they, they can score 30 something points. And I changed my mind. Go with the over going with the (laughs) over. If Mitchell Trubisky is what everybody's telling me he is. And if the bears offense is really good and now they have David Montgomery back. No, this is going to be, I'm seeing like a 34, 27 type of game. I'm going with the over here. All right. Y'all can at me. Let us know in the comments below, whatever you need to do. Let me know if I'm crazy for taking the over in this game. Just got the end there. We both got the Green Bay Packers winning by five points or more. Let us know what you think. All right, everybody, it's time for our Pigswise Parlay of the Week. We are going to build a parlay that hopefully you can build around or just go ahead and use it yourself. Make some money, okay? I'll get us started with my pick. And this week, Jeff is going to give two picks instead of normally me giving two picks and him giving one. I'm going to let the dude who's on the hot streak right now give you guys the other two picks, but I'll start us off. I'm taking the Arizona Cardinals to beat the LA Rams and mostly, I mean, two different reasons. We were saying before we started the segment, uh, Cooper cup, he's got the Rona. So I don't believe he's going to be playing obviously. Um, and he's huge for their offense. But mostly because there's a guy named John Walford that is going to be quarterbacking for the Rams. And if you tell me that you knew who he was before this week and before the media got a hold of this, I would tell you you're either a Demon Deacon alumni or you're lying (laughs) because you didn't know who he was. And I don't know who he was. I know that he played pretty well, I guess, in the AAF for Arizona. But I digress. He hasn't taken a snap in the NFL Um, The Cardinals defense is good enough to, I think, keep him on the edge of his heels. It's just that I I cannot see a snare. I mean, oh, my goodness. If Cliff Kingsbury and Kyler Murray lose to John Walford from Wake Forest, you are who they say you are then, Cliff. So and I believe in you a little bit more than that. So for that reason, I'm taking the Cardinals. And not only that, the Cardinals have to win. So, yeah, I got them. Uh, Jeff, who do you have for our well, Before related? we go to that, OJ, I must tell you that Wake Forest, I think, has 25 or 3,000 students. It's a real small school. 
And that's mm -hmm. a good thing because you've just enraged the entire alumni association of Wake Forest. And I, you know, <laughs> again, I won't tell them that you live in Houston. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Um, let me get. Oh gosh. <laughs> let me give you change my, my name now. Change my address. All that stuff. Let me give you my two picks. Now, this one uh, is an interesting one: the Vikings and the Lions. All right. Now. The Vikings' Dalvin Cook apparently is not going to play in the game because his father passed away. I saw that just recently uh, in the last couple hours. Uh, the Lions may be without Matthew Stafford. The Vikings are favored by six and a half. So I'm going to say that what you should bet here is the under at, 40, at 54 and a half because no Dalvin Cook makes the Vikings one-dimensional. I think the Vikings will win the game. I'm interested to see, though, OJ, if this line doesn't move as more, you know, as the bet, the money starts to come in based upon Dalvin Cook not being available to the Vikings. But I don't think either of these teams are going to score a ton of points in this game, so I'm going to take the under at 54 and a half. Now, I like this other game a ton. The Redskins, excuse me, I, can't, I, can't, I gotta get out of that habit. The Washington Same. football team is a point and a half favorite over the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, when you look at the game, this is why I like the, why I like the Eagles so, or excuse me, the, the football team so much. Washington has five first round draft choices in the defensive line. All of their linebackers are healthy for the first time in about three weeks. When we watched them on TV last week and they got people gouged them with the run, they were playing with fourth and fifth string linebackers. Now they've got all their linebackers healthy. Their secondary's healthy. Uh, they've got, uh, whether it's Taylor Heineke or Alex Smith, they're going to have a quarterback that's in there that understands that you can't turn the ball over. They'll manage the game well. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game, but I certainly think the Washington football team will win that game and win the uh, the uh, NFC East. Wow, so you just do not, you are sleeping on Jalen Hurts and trying to win that starting position, aren't you? Well, hmm. I just think, I just think that, the, you know, that when you look at how the teams match up, you know, Hurts is a threat to run the ball and, you know, to get out and move around out in the pocket, but he's going to have five guys that can all hunt a quarterback real well. And I think that, uh, you know, they're, Washington's secondary is, I think, really, really underrated. You know, they've got some guys in there that that can that can make plays. Can't curl the young safety that they have is an outstanding player. Um, you know, Darby the, at corner, he's playing it better than he's played since he was a rookie in Buffalo. So I, I they hate really like him it. in Philly too. They hate him in Philly. This is going to be a game for for Darby. Yeah, and I mean, this is this know is that a, this is a you know. Old school NFC East rival game. Two teams that you know the cities are an hour and a half apart. It's it's a it's going to be a matchup. And I, but I still think the Washington Football Team will win that thing by more than a point and a half. Yeah, for sure. It's it's basically a pick 'em. So I love your picks. So there you have it, America. I have Arizona over John Walford in the Rams, and Jeff has the Vikings over the Lions. And he also has DC over Philly. Let us know what you think in the comments below and hopefully you make some money. All right, guys, it is time for Jeff's best segment of the show. <laughs> it is the PicksWise Underdog of the Week. And we are going to tell you two underdogs who we expect to at least cover in week 17 of the NFL. All right, I'll start us off really quick. The Houston Texans, they are seven and a half point dogs at home against the Tennessee Titans. And look, um, the Texans are hot garbage. I've said it many times on the show before. But when you live in Houston like I do, this, this is a true rivalry, albeit it's a newer rivalry, but it is a true rivalry. And nobody would love to play spoiler more to Mike Vrabel and his Tennessee Titans than the Houston Texans. And I do think that all the questions about Deshaun Watson this year, not in the second half of the season, but in the first half of the season, they were there. All of the 
the the narratives and the storylines around the Texans with Esther B, corruption within the organization, Bill O'Brien gets let go, all the draft picks that they've lost, just everything horrible that has happened to Houston. This is the last game of their season, and they're going to go out there and put it all, Deshaun's going to go out there and put it all on the line. And sure, the defense is probably going to give up 3,000 rushing yards to Derrick Henry. I get it. But he is going to do enough to keep this game much closer than seven and a half points. I have the Houston Texans covering. Jeff, who you got for us? Well, this is really, really a tough weekend to pick dogs. I'm just calling it. You made a great selection. Uh, you know, here's, the, here's what I, has been going through my mind on this. I was originally going to say the Carolina Panthers, uh, to you know, not to beat the Saints, but certainly to, to uh, handle that six and a half point spread but you know that was all based upon the fact that that they would rest drew Brees. and the fact of the matter is it, you know the lions and the packers game this is how tough this one is the lions and the packers game is going to be going on at the same time that the saints are playing now if it had been if the lions and packers game had been at one o'clock it would. It's conceivable that the Saints wouldn't had nothing to gain by by winning that game because Green Bay had locked up the number one seed. However, because both games are being played at the same time, I think we are going to see Breeze, and I think they're going to play hard and play to win. Although they'll probably be watching the watching the scoreboard as much as you tell them don't. They're you know they're like kids. They're going to do it. So uh, I got to move on, and I got to find me another dog, and I find him in Western New York of all places, mm. the Miami Dolphins going up to Buffalo, and where they are a point and a half underdog. I think the Dolphins are going to cover that spread. That is uh, that is some. That's a ballsy move by you because <laughs> the the Bills are playing very well right now. And Tua, who's going to start in this game, got benched last week. And Fitz Magic came in and saved the day for them. That is very ballsy, but I like it. I like it. I mean, go, go big or go home, man. Go big or go home. So there you have it, America. That's our Picks Wise Underdogs of the Week. Jeff has Miami at was one and a half covering and I have the Houston Texans basically I have Deshaun Watson putting everything out there on the line and and with the resurgence of David Johnson lately especially in the passing game I think that the Houston Texans cover they ain't going down by seven and a half points ain't happening not to the Titans there you have it that's our picks wise underdogs of the week all right guys let's get into Sunday night football <laughs> the Washington football team is going into Philly, into the Lincoln Financial Field, and they're going to play the Eagles. Okay, Washington is favored by two points right now on Wednesday, and the point total is set at 43 and a half. A Washington, they could have made things a lot more comfortable by beating the Panthers, but I digress. They lost 23-13, and since then, a lot of distractions, I think, over there in D.C. I mean, Dwayne Haskins, right? 15th overall draft pick not that long ago. He gets completely cut. They wave him, uh, rid their hands of him. Now, we don't know if Alex Smith is going to be back to play in this game against the Eagles, but Riverboat Ron, he did say that he is hopeful he will return. If not, we will see Taylor Heineke play. Uh, the Eagles, they lost to the Cowboys, but their, uh, their banged-up secondary got ran all over. CeeDee Lamb, he had a hell of a day. Jalen Hurts. Kind of brought back down to earth a little bit, right? He threw two interceptions. Jeff, if DC can win this game, they are in the playoffs. If they don't, the winner of the Giants-Cowboys game will go on into the postseason. Can DC get it done in Philly? Well, I think the amazing thing about this, OJ, is, you know, the NFC East has four of the most iconic NFL franchises, some of the oldest deepest rivalries, most passionate fan bases. And when this game kicks off at 8.20 p.m., whether they're Giants fans if the Giants win or uh, Cowboy fans if the Cowboys win, they're going to be pulling for the Eagles as big as you can bet. And can you imagine Cowboy fans having to pull for the Eagles? I mean, that's almost yeah. like... You, you know, that's like sacrilegious. 
But I just really think that Washington is a better football team. Uh, Philadelphia is a little beat up. Jalen Hurts has given them some, you know, some juice in the last few weeks. You know, uh, Deshaun Jackson so scored his first touchdown, seems like in forever. You know, they have some positive things going on. Doug Peterson, you know, is under fire. This would be a big time win for him. But all in all, I look at the two football teams, and as long as Washington doesn't turn it over, they can run the ball, they play great defense. This is a Ron Rivera type of team, and I think when 10 o'clock rolls around on Sunday evening that they will be the NFC East champions. Yeah, this Washington defense is is very good, and it is a tall ask for somebody to ask Jalen Hurts, who's very new in this league, to go in there and, and go up against that defense. He's going to be under pressure. Um, Philly's offensive line, you know, they can be pretty bad at times. So I do think that D.C. wins this game. Um, and because the, the spread is so low, it's only at two points, I guess I'm taking Washington to cover it. I do think it's going to be a close game, though. Um, and, yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't, I'm, still, I'm still hung up on the idea of, like, Cowboys fan rooting for Eagles because I've been – to a game, uh, it was actually Sunday Night Football last year in the in Lincoln Financial in Philly, and Dallas Cowboys were playing them, and that is one of the craziest NFL settings I've ever sat in. I mean, the rivalry, the hate between these two fans is real. It is crazy. I saw like three fights. One of them happened right next to me. And these people are crazy. We know Philly's crazy, but uh, man, that's funny. Um, but yeah, I feel much more confident about DC winning this game with Alex Smith than I do Taylor Heineke, just because I don't really know that much about him. I don't really remember the last time I saw him get a start. I feel like it's been a while. So I, yeah, I, yeah, but DC's winning this game for sure. Now, how do you feel about the point total real quick? It's pretty low. It's at 43 and a half. What do you think? Well, I don't know. 43 and a half is really low. I mean, yeah. um, and, you know, you think about it and you look at that Eagle defense and, you know, they gave up 37 points last week to Dallas. Now, I don't think Washington's as dynamic as Dallas is offensively, but I do think they can score some points. And then Philadelphia only scored 17 against the defense that we've been talking about for months is how bad they are. And Washington certainly is better than that. Um, I, you know, oh, this is where I'm going to, I have to kind of give it to you and you tell me, cause I don't really have a, I don't really, I can't get a beat on it. Yeah. I'm taking the over it's, it's incredibly low and okay. I'm taking the over if Alex Smith plays. Okay. Can I throw in that caveat? Can the record state I'm taking the over if Alex Smith plays? I know that he's going to take care of the ball. I do believe that it it will easily go over. Now, if Heineke plays, I, don't touch it. But if Heineke plays, I guess for the record, I will say take the under. So let me just leave it at that. 2020 is a weird year, and week 17 is certainly weird. So these are some risky bets that we're making here. But, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. What do you think about that? I, I, I think that's really – smart that you you know that you hedge it in that way because I, I just mm -hmm. there's so much that has to play into it and that's such a low number that um you know i i agree with you 100 percent wait until late in the week before you play it because we got to know whether alex smith's going to play him. exactly there you go so there you have it guys uh eagles dc showdown playoff implications on the line here and future jobs on the line as well, especially in, in Philadelphia. So our, let us know in the our, comments below which thing. Not our, our jobs. Our, no, our, our we're jobs? good. We're okay. handling our business, unlike our, Carson Wentz, who had every opportunity in the world to say, get into this. I gotta, I gotta talk to Ben. What more does he want? Holy man. <laughs> Your soul. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. There we have it though. DC Eagles, let us know what's up in the comments below, which thing. All right, everybody, it's time for the Pixwise lock of the week. Hopefully you can take our locks that we're feeling really good about, insert them into one of your parlays, just bet on it straight up. Whatever it is, we are almost guaranteeing you. We're putting our careers and our names on the line. No, I'm just kidding. We're not doing that. But we feel really good about the picks that we're about to give you guys, and hopefully you can make some money with it, okay? I'll start us off. I am taking the Cleveland Browns. As of right now, they are, where to go? They're 10-point 
favorites to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. And why would they be 10-point favorites to beat the Steelers, you ask? Well, I'll tell you why. Because Ben Roethlisberger ain't playing in this game. And honestly, by all the things that I've read, all the, all the things that I've read about the Steelers, there's actually a chance that Tomlin might actually rest a, a handful of starters for that team. So I digress. Uh, it's a team that hasn't gotten a lot of rest this season. They've had to play a lot of weird games on weird days. They certainly need it. And I think Tomlin knows his team enough to where he's going to he's gonna rest more players than just Ben Roethlisberger. But with that being said, Baker Mayfield, this dude is going to come in and I believe that he is going to handle business and I think he's going to handle it well. I think the defense is going to play pretty well. They have to against Mason Rudolph. You better because the last time we saw him play, I think, against the Browns, I want to say he threw four interceptions. So this should be this should be a cakewalk in the Browns half to win this game to get into the postseason. And Baker Mayfield, is, he's people are starting to chirp. They're starting to question them again. So they're going to get it done in this game. I digress. Browns, minus 10, book it. Jeff, who you got? That's a good one. I like that one a bunch. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to stay right in the state of Ohio for my pick. Cincinnati is hosting the Ravens. And the Ravens are white hot right now. Lamar Jackson has been a revelation. They're starting to run the ball again. They've added, they've tweaked and added some things, some little misdirection stuff in their offense, which really looks nice. And Wink Martindale's defense is lights out right now. So Cincinnati playing with backup people. Uh, obviously, they're at home. I get that. It's a 13. And this is a, this is a big call. To make a lock a 13-point favorite, you got to really feel good about it. And I just really do. I think the Ravens are a team that nobody's going to want to face when they get in the playoffs. And for Cincinnati, it's play out the string. Uh, Ravens have a lot to play for. And yeah. – they will go into the playoffs, in my prediction, I'm, they're going to go into the playoffs five-game winning streak. Yeah, the Ravens do have a lot to play for here. And Lamar Jackson has a lot to play for as well. Outside of just, you know, the postseason and, and the logistics of it all, it you know, the question is, can Lamar Jackson-led football team win a postseason game? Well, guess what? To win that postseason game, you better get into the postseason. So they have to win this game for sure. I love your pick. I think they can do it. So there you have it, guys. Picks wise, lock of the week. That is, I'm taking um, why the memory of a goldfish. I am take. Who was my pick, Jeff? You took the Cleveland Browns. The Browns. What is wrong with me? Oh my gosh! I'm sitting here, my brain's revolving around Lamar Jackson and accuracy and all that stuff. But anyways, yes, I'm taking the Browns minus ten. And you are taking the Ravens. Massive Don't. brain fart. But you know what? That's how we're going to end the regular season on twenty in 2020 is with a massive brain fart by me. I mean, but seriously, what is going on here? Don't, don't feel bad because Lamar Jackson does that to defenses too. So he doesn't, you know, you just stand in line with the rest of the people. It is too. And you know what? The Browns, they had a brain fart when they decided to lose to the Jets. So there's that. I'm not the only one in 2020 having these issues. Okay, guys. But there you have it. That's how we're going to end the Picks Wise NFL Show Week 17 regular season. As I stated earlier, we will be going into the playoffs and handling each of those games individually. So I'm very much looking forward to it. And you can also look forward to probably a little bit more of props bets sprinkled in there because we don't really talk a whole lot of props bets on this show, especially because we film it so early in the week. A lot of the, the big bookies and the big bookie sites, they don't have the props listed yet. So I'm really excited for one to get into that because I love props. Um, with that being said, Jeff, thank you so much. As always, it's been a pleasure working with you and uh so glad to close out the season with you yeah it's been a great season oj and now it's the playoffs and that's where you make your real money that's right that's right remember everybody make your money but do it responsibly please gamble responsibly on behalf of pixwise jeff and myself peace out see you next year